Trepania. I'm Durbin. I'm Laura. And we're going to read way too much into Disney's Tarzan. Oh. That was amazing. <laughs> With the Tarzan movie, the new one coming out this weekend, thought it'd be fun to go back in time a little bit. And I actually never saw Disney's Tarzan until the other day. Like, it was really good. Like, I thought The Lion King was so good that I... This is what my little child brain did. I thought Lion King was so good, I just stopped watching all the other Disney animated movies that came after it. Well, and a lot of the Disney animated movies that came after it were repetitive of the ones before That's it. That's true. And to be honest, when you and I were watching Tarzan, there was a lot of stuff where like, hey, that bad guy it reminds me of Gaston from Beauty and the Beast. And she looks like Belle a little bit. A little bit. A little bit. And then he, you were right, he had similar features to the prince in Beauty and the Beast when he turned from the beast back to a human. Yeah, just, just a little bit. And then that last fight in the trees between Tarzan and that bad guy. What was that bad guy's name? Clayton. I have yes. a cousin named Clayton. Oh, I should have remembered that. Anyway. Uh, well, we did it. you did now. So that last fight between Tarzan and... And Clayton in the Trees, to me, was very... Also, it's just like with the rain and all that stuff, it reminded me a lot of the Beast fighting Gaston on the roof of the palace and Beauty and the Beast as well. It's like yeah. so similar. A lot of things that they pulled from other Disney movies. So yeah, I get it. And I agree. I thought Tarzan was a little repetitive. It kind of followed the same plot line. And I was a little disappointed watching this because, I don't know, I... I guess I don't know too much about the story of Tarzan, but I thought he went to England. So, like, she came to his jungle and learned his world and saw how he was raised. Then he went we to... We just don't know anything about the Tarzan story. I did yeah. read something that in um, in the book by Edgar Rice Burroughs that um, the mom died of natural causes and then um, uh, Kershak, I believe is how you say the, the dad gorilla's name, did kill the father. Which, in the previews for the, the new Tarzan, it looks like that's what they're doing. Whereas in this one, both parents were killed by the tiger that comes after Tarzan later. It was actually kind of interesting. Because, you know, there's Disney again dealing with some heavy things. But they have those unique creative ways to cut away so you don't see the death. Yeah. Like, the parents are mauled by a freaking leopard. You just see their blood on the ground with leopard prints. Yeah, and it was like, wow. I mean, I guess kudos to Disney for kid friendly up death of a family i don't know it disney's was... gone pretty good at it seeing <laughs> yeah. as there's a parent that's dead in every single movie that is very true not my favorite disney cartoon yeah. but it's i mean it's it's okay so when i was watching this movie like i was trying to you know as i'm getting ready for this video trying to think of something cool to talk about and i feel like that opening song kind of already had it where they're like trust yeah. what you believe in your heart and fate will guide the way and things mm -hmm. like that i was like what that now that's a very interesting concept because the movie started to follow that song, right? Because first off in the beginning, you have Mama Gorilla, Baby Gorilla, and the leopard goes and eats the Baby Gorilla. And then you have the parents of Tarzan who had a shipwreck and they somehow built this house. How on this earth did they do that and have a grandfather have a clock and a dresser? <laughs> and it's like, what? And a bookshelf of books. It's like, you were on a light. I'm getting beyond the point. <laughs> Same leopard that eats the baby gorilla mauls on the parents and then there there they are dead under a desk with little leopard paws in there. And it's like, oh my gosh. And But the song is singing about fate guiding the way. And look at that. You have a mama gorilla who just lost her baby. So she's got this massive hole in her heart. And then you got mm -hmm. this baby that just lost his parents and will either die of leopard eating or exposure if the baby is not taken yes. care of and raised and nurtured and all that stuff. So Mama Gorilla finds the baby, loves the baby, takes it as her own son, raises the baby. The baby gets nurtured in a family of love and a good mm -hmm. environment and grows up to be, you know... Tarzan. Tarzan. A hero. And so what's interesting is when you look at that, though, you know, it's talking about fate guiding the way. But I don't really believe in fate as a blind force. I believe that there's a God who's got good plans for all of us. Now, what's interesting, though, is, is I don't think God goes out killing baby gorillas and killing kids' parents just so he can bring something together to make something else. Like, and, and the reason I don't believe that is because Jesus says things like, the enemy steals, kills, and destroys. I have come that you might have life and have it more abundantly. So when I look at it, if there's something in our lives that's stealing from us, killing us, or destroying us, that's not God trying to teach us a lesson or anything like that. That's the enemy. But Jesus says, I've come that you might have life and have it more abundantly. So to me, that's where that line is. Something that God does really well is when the enemy strikes in our lives, how God can turn it completely around. Because I mean, look at that. That leopard took that little baby away from that mother gorilla. 
that leopard took the parents away from Tarzan. But what happened? It all got turned on its face. And even though like that horrible situation happened, something good was brought out of it. It's kind of like Adam and Eve, they ate off that tree and a lot of horrible things have happened since. But what did God do? He didn't just bring good out of it. He brought greatness out of it when Jesus came, died for us, rose again, and has given us like all brand new life. I'm just trying to say that I think God has got good plans for us. And even when bad things happen in our lives, that doesn't mean that's the will of God. But God is so much bigger that he could flip all of that around and, and turn it around. And I feel like I kind of already said this with the Finding Nemo thing, but it's such a big storyline that you see it everywhere where it's like something bad happens, but then by the end of it, it seems like, well, that must have been fate because look at the amazing good that came out of it. So if I was going to read into this movie, that's kind of the message I get from it. That, yeah, we live in a fallen world where bad things happen, but God is so much bigger than those bad things that they could be completely turned around, and no matter what, the enemy just can't win. For how I read way too much into this, I'm going to go off of one of Phil Collins' songs, and I got my phone so that this way I don't accidentally misquote the lyrics, but it's You'll Be In My Heart, and it goes, Come, stop your crying. It will be all right. Just take my hand, hold it tight. I will protect you from all around you. I will be here, don't you cry. And I mean, the song goes on and on, basically about having this protector. And I know it's the mom basically kind of singing it towards Tarzan, but really it's God to us. He's there for us. He will hold us tight. He will be there and wrap us in his embrace whenever we let him be there. I mean, there is a growing process and there's times when we need to, you know, walk in faith and do what's right. Kind of like how Tarzan needed to be a, be a grown ape slash man and kind of <laughs> learn his path. And he did, he figured out the right way. And he had a loving mother who came back to him just like we have a loving God who will always be there to wrap us in his embrace. There's always so much to read into so many awesome movies. Yeah, we can just pull, you know, something big out of something this small. Oh yeah. I, I had a lot of fun with this movie though. I had more fun watching it than I was expecting to have. Well, because he had never seen it before. Yeah. I mean, it's no Lion King to me still though. And no, Lion King, not. Aladdin, and Beauty and the Beast, things like that for Little me. Little Mermaid? Yeah. I mean, I like Little you Mermaid know what, though? I can't say anything bad about Little Mermaid. You know, I don't think I was the target audience of Little Mermaid. No. But I I don't know. But anyway, point is, is like those to me were the golden age of those Disney animated movies. So because to me, that was like the golden age, and Tarzan kind of falls just a little bit outside that. I'm probably going to give this one like three and a half out of five stars. I enjoyed it, and I had a lot of fun watching it, and... Now I'm even more excited to see this live action movie and to see what they're going to do. Um, I only gave Tarzan three stars. Um, I didn't watch it in the theaters because I was like at that in-between age where I was too cool for cartoons. <laughs> and so I didn't see it until I was an adult. And I kind of based it on the other Disney movies, which I love. And so compared to them, I felt like it stole a lot from the other stories. I just felt like Disney wasn't they had an opportunity be, to be creative and to be new and it wasn't so although I enjoyed the story I love the like the graphics the way they did it I mean you could tell every movie they get a step better and a step better but because the story wasn't my 100% favorite I only give it three stars if you saw Disney's animated Tarzan movie how many stars out of five would you get it make sure to let us know in the comments we're super excited to see the new Tarzan movie coming out so Keep your eye out for the spoiler free review on that as well as the spoiler talk. I'm Durbin. I'm Laura. Thank you so much for checking out Durbania.